you should probably expect spoilers. She's a 16-bit nerd with a big book of Sega facts and has absolutely no desire whatsoever to get down and shake her booty. Who that? It's Mega Drive. Alright, after much delay, we have arrived at the final Sega Hard Girl that I'll be reviewing. Unless they make a second series of this show, then I'll be right back at it. If you're new to Who Dat, you can bring yourself up to speed on just what a Sega Hard Girl is by checking out the Dreamcast and Saturn episodes. For the rest of you, I'm going to presume you know about Mega Drive, and I think it's safe for me to say that I've saved the best for last, haven't I? One thing I noticed amongst the people who watched that show is regardless of whichever Sega Hard Girl was your favourite, everybody seemed to like Mega Drive. Even me! I mean, Saturn is my waifu of choice, but I have a soft spot for this 16-bit blonde. There's clearly something about Mega Drive. As with all the other Sega Hard Girls, Mega Drive has been designed with visual elements of the console influencing the character's look, while the history and the abilities of the console influencing parts of her personality. Before I start diving into this though, I should probably holler at my American viewers real quick. Since the Sega Mega Drive was called the Sega Genesis in your country, for whatever reason, you're probably wondering if that means the name Genesis is being discarded here in favour for all this Mega Driving. And to you, I say don't feel disheartened. There is actually a completely separate character for the Genesis who makes a somewhat brief cameo in the show. She's a Sega hard girl who went over to America on vacation and became so inspired by the country that she returned to Japan as a complete fangirl of American culture. She calls herself Jenny the Genesis. That's adorable as fuck. A little stereotypical cow girly, but adorable as fuck nevertheless. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked, so uh, back to the lady in question. Visual design. Unlike Dreamcast, whose main design points are just shamelessly thrown in your face, and unlike Sega Saturn, whose design is a lot more reserved, requiring you to do some thorough digging to find out what all the parts represent, Mega Drive is the girl out of the trio who seems to hold a balance between those two extremes. There are some elements here that reference the console's design more clearly than others, but anything that does seem a little obscure at first is easily identifiable if you actually just look at a Japanese Mega Drive. For example, one of the main things I had trouble with understanding was why Mega Drive's hair was golden blonde. It didn't really make sense to me at first. But upon looking at the console, the reference was sitting there in plain sight. The 16-bit logo on the top is gold and is the only part on the console that is coloured as such, which is referenced accordingly by Mega Drive's hair. Makes sense. Keeping with the design for her head, the character wears a hair clip that homages the ABC buttons on a Mega Drive's control pad. These buttons also make an appearance on her sleeves and footwear too. As we head on down to the torso, Mega Drive wears a white shirt with blue buttons that exposes her midriff. The buttons on the shirt reference the blue start buttons on a Japanese Mega Drive controller. Blue highlights can also be seen on her jacket's collar and shoulders. Also visible on the jacket is an emblem that houses the Japanese Mega Drive's main logo. The shorts, while looking crazy sexy cool and gets a thumbs up from me, seem to be there just to complement the rest of her design and don't reference anything. And if they do, then I've clearly overlooked it. Lastly, her shoes seem to be a bit of a mishmash of elements already seen elsewhere on her outfit. As I mentioned earlier, the ABC buttons makes an appearance on her shoes, as do the blue coloured buttons too. One thing about the footwear that seems to be paying homage in a subtle way are the socks, as they are more than likely referencing the large slouching socks that Sonic wears over his shoes. Sonic the Hedgehog found his initial fame on the Mega Drive console, and being Sega's mascot does make Sonic somewhat of a prominent character to homage. It would seem fitting for Mega Drive to be the hard girl that references Sonic, and this feels like the Hedgehog has been represented in a way that is not too in your face or distracting. The main colour of her outfit is black, as that references the colour of the console. The white and pink accents to her colour palette come from the white and pink text, mostly found on the Japanese Mega Drive's design. 
One last item worthy of note is that big ass book she carries around called the 16-Bitpedia. This book contains detailed information on all things relating to Sega, though how much you wanna bet it lacks any entries for all those questionable advertisements that ran in the old British Viz comics. Yeah, don't think I forgot about them ones. The 16-bit Peter itself is interactive and acts like a computer. Whenever Mega Drive accesses the entries in the book, a Windows screen will pop up to display the article. As far as our overall look goes, the ratio of black to white sections darken Mega Drive's outfit the most out of the three girls. This is not necessarily a bad thing either as it helps Mega Drive to stand out amongst the usage of white featured across Dreamcast and Saturn. Then, with the shirt and trousers being short, it allows the neutral tones of her skin colour to break apart the items so she doesn't become drowned in all these black garments. Finally, the pink and blue highlights add much needed flavour to the look so Mega Drive doesn't appear too dull overall. Honestly, this design to me is perfect, they absolutely nailed it. There's just enough homage in here to keep things set on what it's trying to represent without needing to go overboard. The homaging items themselves have been executed cleverly into items that look like they belong on her character. A hair clip made out of control pad buttons looks like a legit hair clip. The start button from the control pad has transferred well over to the buttons of her shirt and they look like proper shirt buttons. Every element to Mega Drive's design looks like it fits and makes sense. As much as I love the other two girls, I always felt one or two items on them seemed like a stretch too far, but not with Mega Drive. Nothing looks out of place, and she absolutely owns that outfit. Personality. So, if it wasn't made clear by her glasses and the 16-bit PDR, Mega Drive falls under the bookworm character trope. She is ever ready to access articles from her book and use them within conversation. Oddly enough though, Mega Drive is not a shy person. A trait that sometimes often gets lumped in with the nerdy character type is a shy attitude around groups of people, but Mega Drive rarely ever displays this, if at all. In fact, Mega Drive seems more calm than nervous. She will interact with people without hesitation, and she doesn't seem like an introvert. Out of the three girls though, she is definitely the quietest. I like to feel that this more modest character trait might have something to do with the popularity of the Mega Drive in Japan. Unlike the rest of the world which absolutely embraced this 16-bit machine, in Japan the Mega Drive was not as popular and found itself lagging behind the competition considerably. This suggests to me that a reason as to why Mega Drive might not be as loud as the other two is because her console didn't do as well over there. I could be reading a bit too much into that, but it is something to consider. One aspect about her personality that is a definite homage to the console is Mega Drive's inability to partake in physical tasks. When the girls are given assignments that require them to, say, dance a funky dance in the game world of Space Channel 5, Mega Drive lags behind and can't keep up with the pace of Saturn and Dreamcast. This is referencing the fact that the Mega Drive is an older, more outdated console. The machine doesn't have the internal hardware to match the abilities of the Saturn and Dreamcast. Mega Drive has lower processing power and can't handle such heavy duty tasks, so the character is no good at things like dancing, or skating, or anything else that requires her to be physically active. This doesn't mean she's a failure though, quite the contrary in fact. Mega Drive excels at strategy. This could be due to the Mega Drive console having a lot of RPG games on it, as old school turn based RPGs were coming into popularity at the time. She is also extremely well versed in shooters. The Mega Drive was home to many arcade game ports and shooting games happened to be one of the major genres that made the jump from arcade cabinets to the Mega Drive console. One last part to Mega Drive's personality is her competitive nature. It very rarely occurs, but when it does, Mega Drive will briefly bring forth this overconfident side. A moment that comes to mind is during the Jet Set Radio episode, where Mega Drive lacks the skills to keep up with the other two girls, so her skates are given boosters as a handicap. Once she activated the boosters and took off, her competitive streak kicked in, and she even laughed menacingly at the thought of winning. Granted, she lost anyway because she flopped it, but regardless of the outcome, for a while there she became very hot-blooded about the task at hand. I'm not sure if this trait references anything in particular, though I like to feel it might be down to the console trying to keep up with the competition in Japan. The console itself was a proud console, but never achieved the height of success that Sega Japan had expected of it during the 90s. To keep up with their competition probably felt like a very proud thing for Sega, so for Mega Drive as a character, to keep up with her competition might be what brings about this proud nature too. 
In any case, Mega Drive's overall personality is an entertaining one and keeps things neatly in the pocket as far as humour is concerned. The calm and often abrupt delivery of her lines adds a dry sense of charm to the way she talks, and honestly, I found myself looking forward to her interactions the most because of it. Importance. Sega Hard Girls has 13 short episodes to make things happen, and if I'm being honest, throughout that entire time, very little did. The girls attend their classes, they get their medals, and after 12 episodes, boom shakala rude boy, the girl them are graduating. With Dreamcast and Saturn, they always felt entertaining to watch, but also somewhat lacking in movement. There seemed to be no real progression for those two, they just turned up each episode and did their thing. We got a few jokes, we got a few laughs, but nothing happened with those two that would make me look at the show and feel like an arc had occurred. Mega Drive is the major exception in this show and it's mostly down to her personality. Dreamcast's personality is aloof because she's the funny one. Saturn's personality is sensible yet self-confident because she's the voice of reason and the showboating one. There's very little room for personalities of this type to evolve. With Mega Drive, however, she is introduced with a cool reserved identity. Sure, she's somewhat open to interaction, but overall she is mostly closed off to new ideas due to personal fears. This instantly gave Mega Drive the chance to become exposed to new things and change because of them. One of the moments that stand out is the Jet Set Radio episode again, this time focusing on the moment where Dreamcast wants to deviate from their work to go take photos of their day out. Mega Drive agrees with this idea, leaving Saturn surprised by her choice, since she wouldn't normally do that. Mega Drive makes friends with these two other girls, and because of her interactions with them, she comes to experience new things. There comes a few moments where Mega Drive's cool attitude melts away for a minute to say something profoundly warm and thought-provoking. There's no way she would have said these things had she not progressed as a character and evolved throughout the show. Mega Drive's arc is so progressive in fact that during the last end credit dance, she can be seen successfully dancing alongside the other girls in perfect sync now, whereas every other ending credits had Mega Drive failing to keep up. This is another example of the character coming of age and showing us what she has learnt. Mega Drive is the only character to have a genuine arc. As far as importance goes, this girl is something very crucial to a story like this. Sega Heart Girls is meant to be presented as a harmless fun comedy, but there's incredibly clear details of heart and soul injected into this show too. It's actually a brief coming of age story, and Mega Drive is the key component into giving it that feel due to her arc. Conclusion. Some might see Mega Drive as a third wheel, or the inferior one to Saturn and Dreamcast, but they couldn't be more wrong. Not all characters need to be in the front and centre, making vast amounts of noise to make an impact. In fact, most of my favourite characters are ones who skirt on the outsides, or fall in the underdog category, mainly because those characters have more of a story to tell, and Mega Drive is the main character of the trio who told the most story. She also brings a certain level of stability that I think Sega Hard Girls needed. If she wasn't written this way, then the show would have definitely been missing its core progression, and it could have even gone down a more chaotic slapstick route instead. I'm very happy it didn't though, because what we do have is a neat little series with some good humour, but also the right amount of feels to get you to remember it for more than just the joke things. And for that, we have to thank Mega Drive for it. Mega Drive has been visually designed well, she has been presented well, she makes the most progress in the entire series, and I absolutely adore this character, so it comes as no surprise that I'm gonna give her my Valhar emblem. Just uh, don't be telling Sega Saturn that I said that, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to get kicked out of the house tonight. Probably shouldn't have worn this t-shirt either, to be honest. <laughs>